Hey everybody, it's Dalton. Uh, today I want to talk to you about a bait I like to call a whiz gidget. You know, there's times you're out on a lake, you know, and the, and the bass, maybe they start off biting really good and then all of a sudden everything slows down. Now, if you know, uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know how much I like the little Ned Rig. The Ned Rig is, is one of the best ways to catch finicky bass. Um, you put it on a little shroom head, you can move it, this thing will stand up for you. It's got a lot of cool little action to it. And you get it around a bass and he can't stand it. I don't care if he's, if he's hungry or not, he's going to take it. The problem with this is it's, a, it's an exposed hook. Uh, small baits do catch big bass. My wife and I caught a bunch of big bass this summer on these little Ned Rigs. But when you're in a lake that has a lot of vegetation, the lake I'm fishing right now up north has a lot of cover in it. It's got tree branches, grass, it's got all kinds of stuff. So you're gonna throw this thing, you're gonna catch a bass, but to catch that bass, you're probably gonna lose about five of these. And it gets kind of expensive. There is an alternative that I like to use in a covered lake to this Ned Rig. A few years ago, I watched a video and I, I saw a technique similar to this, and there's one out called a chicken rig, which is pretty similar to this particular technique. But I haven't been able to find the name of it, so I just decided to give it a title. When, my dad, when I was a kid, if my dad didn't know what something was, he would call it a whiz gidget. So this is going to be a finesse, Texas rigged, weighted whiz gidget, or nail weighted whiz gidget. However you want to put it, it's a whiz gidget. Let me tell you everything you're going to need for this. You're going to need a pack of four inch yum dingers, a pair of scissors, crazy glue, a little Phillips screwdriver, a small one, a nail weight, and of course the dinger itself. I'm going to show you how I set this up. I take the Phillips screwdriver and there's two ends to these uh, dingers. You have the fat end and the skinny end. You're going to go through the fat end. You're going to take and you're going to poke a hole in it. And I'm not going to open this up right now, but you're going to take your crazy glue or super glue and you're going to put just a little dab on the head. You take your nail weight and you're going to shove this nail weight into the head of this bait and it's going to go all the way through. And the crazy glue is going to keep that weight in there for you so you don't lose it. Sometimes you wind up losing those things. So what it winds up looking like, and I've got one here done, is it looks just like this. It's very straight. Now you're going to need a spinning rod. I think a spinning rod is the best way to use this. Now if you use spinning rods, a little tip I can give you, you notice all of my spinning rods have braided line. This is 10 pound test braid and I tie a fluorocarbon leader. So what happens is that fluorocarbon is very expensive. By doing that, it will save you a ton of money. Generally, I only uh, switch my braid out on my uh, spinning reels maybe once a year. So it does save a lot of money. Just a little tip, kind of help you out. So what I have tied on here with a Palomar knot is a little one aught extra wide gap Gamagatsu hook. Okay? I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to take this little whiz gidget and I'm going to cut, cut maybe just a quarter of an inch of that skinny end. Now I'm going to Texas rig it. I'm going to come through the skinny end. It's going to look like that. Bring the hook through. I'm going to turn the hook. You notice that this hook has a little shoulder on it. So I'm going to turn the hook and I'm going to set the bait right on top of that shoulder so it doesn't come down. Now I'm going to Texas rig it. All I'm going to do is come through the bait like this and that is a Texas rigged worm. When the fish bites it, the bait moves back and that's how you get them hooked. Now it's not weedless though because I can take my finger and what's going to happen is I'm going to wind up poking my finger. So to make it weedless, I'm going to do something that is called text posing. I just call it skin hooking. I'm going to take that bait, 
and I'm going to skin hook the tip of that hook to where I can run my finger down and now I'm not going to get hooked. And this right here is what it looks like. This thing has a really cool action. You can stand it up. You can throw it out and, and what I like about it is that the weight is on the end of it rather than using a little bullet weight. So it falls different. If you're fishing vegetation, you see little holes in the vegetation, you can pitch that in there and get in there where those bass are. So when it falls down, it's going to lay down. Lift your rod tip up, maybe a couple inches, and you can just move it in place if you want. I've caught them this way. Another thing you can do is hop this thing on the bottom. It really has a cool action that's going to get the bass's attention. You know, bass by nature are very curious. They may come and look, come and look at something just because they're curious about it, and then they take a bite at it, and you're going to catch them. I'm using 10 pound braid, my leader, on my, on my 10 pound braid is a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. That's about a heavy, <coughs> excuse me, that's about as heavy as I'm going to go. And that's what it looks like. Just a Texas rigged, little finesse, nail weighted, whiz gidget. You need to give this thing a try. When those bass are finicky in those covered lakes, you're going to catch them. I hope this tip helps. I'm looking forward to a weekend of fishing. I'll let you know how it goes. Talk to you soon.